everybody meet phil phil is our pool man he's a great guy phil pow from china and he let's see cleans what, our pool let's see what he got today yeah ah this is what he collected today oh that's it that's it it's a nice hole right there. It's a good day's work right there. Okay. Dump this out. Oh, yep, and that's how you do that. And then I gotta go spray Phil, give him a bath. It's the one, <laughs> it's the one bad thing about this pool. You, you gotta give Phil a bath? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he doesn't wash himself. I don't think that. It gets kind of nasty. Oh, oh boy. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. We are going to be working on the pool today. I don't love pools, but I love my wife, and she loves pools. Therefore, I love pools. So, because I love pools, I love the maintenance that comes with pools and we're going to swap out our single speed pump for a variable speed pump. This has started to become a little bit of an issue. Intermittent just shutting off on its own. I don't know what the deal is. I could probably dig in there. There's probably a capacitor that might need to be changed. but. I want a variable speed pump and this is a single speed and so even if I do fix it I'm still not getting the energy efficiency that I want so that every time I look out at the pool all I see is just a big money pit I can feel better about having a variable speed pump and all of the electricity that I'm saving with a variable speed pump so that's what we're gonna do and so if you are a handyman like me we just bought this house about a year ago and didn't know anything about pools but now we do and this is my help to you to share what I've learned. Hopefully, if you're in this boat, this may be a helpful video for you. One and a half horsepower pool pump. I think it's a waterway. It's a model 6579 from Doheny's. He uses up 12 amps running all the time. Water gets sucked in through the hose into the intake through this additional skimmer basket in the pump and then it gets pushed up into the sand filter it goes down to the middle of the sand filter and then like bubbles up and then once it gets filtered it gets pumped right back into the pool do the jet right there and that creates your water cycle you want your pump to be sized right so that you can cycle whatever capacity your pool is we've got a 24 inch sorry 24 foot diameter pool at about 48 inches 50 inches that comes out to be about 14,000 gallons of water in the pool and so you want to recycle those 14,000 gallons in about eight hours. And so you need to size your pump. This one currently is an 83 gallon per minute. I gotta do the math on that. 83 gallons a minute times 60 minutes. That's almost 5,000 gallons per hour. And I need to cycle it through eight once every eight hours well shoot if i'm at 14,000 gallons i just need three hours worth in order to cycle 15,000 gallons so in three hours this pump running full speed that's way faster than i need it and so but this is only a single speed so i only need to run this a minimum three hours a day all right, so this is the variable speed pump. This is a Harris Proforce AG variable speed pump. So I've pulled everything out of the box. This is what it comes with. The unit here with the control panel, with the uh, intake, outtake, 
outflow valve, and then the, uh, the cover, skimmer basket cover. It's got all of the gaskets that you need. Now, this would be for a PVC connection. Uh, if we were going to install it this way, but um, I'm just going to reuse the connections that we have on the old pump. So I won't end up using these guys. All right, so before you start any work, you want to unplug the unit. All right, and then you've got to plug off the water source. So here, we got to get the nasty skimmer basket out. And then we need you get these rubber stoppers. You want to plug off so that no water can just run down into the pump. Once that's tight, got to move into the inside. So I've got the mowing derby going on out here at the same time. How great is that? So this little guy goes on there. I had to unscrew that so that I could get this bigger stopper in that hole, plug it up. I've got that plugged, so no water is gonna be entering in here. And I've got this one plugged from the inside and so that nothing's gonna flow back out here. I mean, some water, the water that's in the pipes are gonna, are gonna flow out, but now it's time to disconnect this line and this line so we can remove the pump put the new one in and then on these hose clamps here I don't know if you knew this or not but these like six and one screwdrivers that are interchangeable if you take this bit out that hex size is a 5 16 it fits right on most of the hose clamps and so don't use a common screwdriver just get yourself one of these guys Loosen that up enough, and then this water's gonna come gushing out of here because it's filled. Undo that hose clamp. All right, needed to improvise a little there. Got a wrench out just so that I can remove that because it was tight quarters. Anyway, now the old pump is free. Our two lines free. Time to go get the new one. Should be a simple install. The only thing here, because we're not going to use the PVC fittings, we're going to use this. Uh, I'm not sure what they call these exactly. But I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this one out of there and reuse it and pull this guy out of there. Channel locks will do. Come right out like that. You just need to put new Teflon tape righty tighty clockwise. Put your tape around in the clockwise direction. That way it always tightens the tape as you thread it. A good three wraps. I'll be generous here. It's okay. And then just get the thread started. It's plastic on plastic, so make sure to be gentle getting it started so you don't cross thread. And that one's gonna be good. Hand tighten it to start, and we'll come back with the wrench. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, back out to the pump. Except the problem is, is that our footing 
isn't big enough here. I need to extend our base. Level that down. I just made a little makeshift level base here with an additional deck board for now. I'll probably come back and do more of a permanent install. But now I've got a flat enough base, got clearance from the sand filter. Just screw that down, lock that down good and tight. Crank that down tight with our 5 16 nut driver. And that feels good. I'll use two. If one is good, two is better. Good and tight. Yeah, it's locked on there. That feels good. Lock that guy on there good. So I need to drill a couple new pilot holes. You can't really get a drill in there. And so what you do is you improvise and you put all of the extensions together and get yourself a little screw. All right, one down. All right, all those two guys in there. That feels good. It's in there. That completes the install. It's my least favorite part of the job, picking up all the tools after it's done. Drain plugs out. Oh no! Ah, oh, shoot. Thread it back on there nice. This guy, gonna open the floodgates. Filling all of the pipe back up. All right, now for our fancy command center. Be able to set all of the, the different speeds and the modes. Oh, fancy. It can set the time even. 5 p.m. Enter. Good. And now we're going to try the Eco. Oh. Fill in the basket all the way full. Fill in the sand filter again. So there you go, guys. You can just feel the energy savings. You can do this. This is a, this is not a hard job. If you have any kind of mechanical inclination, this is easy stuff. Yeah, so no longer you don't need this Christmas light timer on your pool pump anymore because the programming's all built in right here. You leave it plugged in. Ooh, fancy. It's running at 1500 RPMs. This thing is on eco mode. Listen to that thing purr. At 1500 RPMs, it's just slowly circulating the water. Eco mode, clean mode, 2400 RPMs, boost mode. Pow! 3250. And it's time to go sit down and celebrate all of the energy savings and the new pumps in. I think we're just gonna let it go on auto mode. And enjoy a job well done. All right, well, I'm gonna get down there and get my plug 
and my skimmer basket cover.